we're going to be doing the area of a triangle in this lesson. Now a triangle has three sides, one, two, three, and any side can be considered the base of the triangle. Okay, this could be the base, this could be the base, or this could be the base. And it doesn't matter which side the triangle is on. It could be, let me see, let me get my marker here. Where is it? Oh, right there. So we can take the triangle and we can turn it this direction, okay? And the base could be this one, okay? Or this one, or this one. It doesn't always have to be on the bottom, okay? So the base is any side of a triangle, and it does not always have to be the bottom one. The height of a triangle is the length of the perpendicular segment from a vertex to the base opposite the vertex. So we start here at a vertex. It doesn't matter which one you start with, okay? It just means it has to be from a vertex to the base that's opposite to it, and it has to be a perpendicular line, which means that it has to have a right angle where it connects with the base there. So that would be the height of the triangle. Over here, if you notice, uh, if I draw it from this vertex to the opposite base, anywhere along that base, it is not a perpendicular line. So what they do, what we do, is we extend this base until we can draw a perpendicular line. Okay? Now, this part does not matter at all. Okay? This part right here. All you're concerned about is the length of this base and the height. <coughs> okay, and the third triangle over here is a right triangle. You notice that because it's got a right angle here where the two uh, sides meet. And in, in a right triangle, the height will all, uh, is well, two of the sides. Okay, and then here we've got a right triangle. And the good thing about a right triangle is that the side is actually a vertex okay so this could be a vertex because it's drawn from one vertex I mean this could be a height because this is drawn from one vertex to the opposite base perpendicular hey look this bottom one can be the height also because see it's drawn from the vertex perpendicular to the opposite base now a triangle is actually half of a parallelogram see there's the parallelogram. We put in a line to divide it in half, and we've got two triangles. Same thing down here with this uh, rectangle. We put a line in here to divide it in two, and we've got two triangles. So, if a triangle is half a parallelogram, and the formula for the area of a parallelogram is area equals base times height, then the formula for the area of a triangle should be area equals one-half base times height. You see how we got that? All right, now find the area of the triangle. We've got uh, to remember these formulas. That's one thing. Area equals one half base times height. Okay. So the th the important thing is to be able to pick out the base and the height. Well, here's our height. Okay, because this is a line drawn from one vertex to the opposite base perpendicular. So that makes that the height. Where it connects is the base down here. So that's 8. So we're going to go 1 half, I mean area equals 1 half base, which is 8, times height, which is 5. And we're going to get area equals 1 half times 8 is 4, times 5, area equals 20 and don't forget to put your measurement and that it's squared because feet times feet equals feet squared. Find the area of this triangle. Once again it's just going to be a matter of finding out the right numbers. Okay I'm going to get a different color this time and we're going to use area equals one half base times height. Area equals. All right. Here's where we started with the vertex. So you can got another red line here, but whenever you drew this line, it went away from the triangle to uh, did not go to an opposite base. Okay, did not go to an opposite base. So this one is the height. 
because it goes from here to here. It's perpendicular, and that is part of this base right here. Okay, so we're going to go 1 half times the base, which is 9, times the height, which is 12. You can always make it easier on yourself. You remember that whenever you're multiplying, it doesn't matter if you multiply in what order you multiply in. So whenever I look at this, I see 1 half times 9. 1 half times 9 is difficult to do. So we do 1 half times 12, and we get 6. That's much easier to do. And then that leaves us with 6 times 9. And we get area equals 54, and it's meters squared. All right, your turn. Find the area of this triangle. Be careful about uh, your base. Make sure that you are only get the base of the triangle, not anything else, okay? And, and uh, pause the video and then get back with me. Okay, did you start out with area equals one-half base times height? Always important to write those formulas down. The more often you write them down, the more likely it is you're going to be able to remember them. So, area equals one half. What's the base? Did you find the base? The base is 16 right here. The 4 has nothing to do with it. That's just the number put in there to fool you a little bit, okay? To make sure that you know what you're doing. So 16 is the base. And what's the height? Yes, the height is here from drawn from this vertex to the opposite base extended. So it's 6. So we go area equals 1 half times 16 is 8 times 6 area equals 48 centimeters squared sometimes you're going to be given the area and then you're going to be told to find a missing side okay so let's try to do that on this one always start out with your formula area equals 1 half base times height and find out the information that you have. We well, have the area right here. That's 54. You have the one half. Now, do you have the height or the base? Okay. You're missing, you've got this uh, side, this side. What you don't have is this side. Okay. So this is a perpendicular line drawn from one vertex to the opposite base so that makes that a height and we know that this is the base of 12 so we multiply times 12 and the thing that you don't know is the height which is x so we go 54 equals 1 half times 12 is 6 x we divide by 6 on both sides of the equal sign put our line down there in the middle that leaves us with 9 equals x, or 9 centimeters equals the height. Now let's see if we can notice some patterns. So we come over here to comparing areas. We've got triangle A, which has a height of 10, a uh, base of 5. So let's find its area. So we come down here and we go 1 half, oops, we don't have a pen. We go 1 half times base, which is 5 times height, which is 10. 1 half times 10 is 5, times 5 is 25 feet squared. Now let's go over to triangle B. Triangle B has a height of 20, which is double this one, and a base of 10, which is double this one. So we go area equals 1 half, times the base, which is 10, times the height, which is 20. That gives us 1 half times 10, which is 5, times 20. Oh, I shouldn't do that. 1 half times 10 is 5, times 20, and that gives us 100. So, let's look at this. The sides were times 2. 10 times 2 is 20. 5 times 2 is 10. But the area went from 25 to 100. I should put my feet squared here. How many times bigger is 100 than 25? Yes, it's four times bigger. Okay. So if this was twice as big and it made this 
four times as big, what kind of pattern do you suppose we can start to figure out? Often, though, it's very important to try a third item to see if you really do have a pattern. So let's see what we've got here. 10 to 30 is times 3. 5 to 15 is times 3. I wonder what the area will be compared to the 25 feet. Let's see. 1 half times the base of 15 times the area of, I mean, the height of 30 gives us 1 half times 30 is 15 times 15 is 225 feet squared. So, we get, went from 25 to 225. How many times bigger is 225 than 25? Well, the way you figure that out is you go 225 divided by 25 and you get 9. Okay? So, we've got 2 times bigger and it went 4 times bigger the area. We got 3 times bigger and it went 9 times bigger for the area. What do you notice? Yes, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. So if I go to the next page, oops, so if I go make another page here, and I've got when it's doubled, that means that you go 2 squared. When it's tripled, you go 3 squared. So whenever it's what we call quadrupled, that means four times, that means it would be four squared or 16 times bigger. It's your turn. We've got triangle A with a height of 12, a base of 6, and an area of 36 square meters, meters squared. Triangle B's length and width are four times as large as triangle A. How much larger is the area of triangle B than triangle A? Your turn, I said, so pause the video and see what you can do and then get back with me. All right, so we've got triangle B's length and area are, length and width are four times as large. Remember whenever it was, uh, let me get my pen, whenever it was two times as large, it was two squared. Whenever it was three times as large, it was three squared. So when it's four times as large, it's going to be four squared or 16 times as large. So let's find, the, oh, we've got the area, 36. So to find the area of triangle B, all you've got to do is go 36 times 16, and that gives us 216, and then 36 right there, that gives us 576 meters squared. Did you get that? I hope that you did, because noticing patterns makes math a whole lot easier.